Okay, so let's now begin implementing Grover's algorithm in Qiskit. And let me share my screen. Okay, so are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So this is uh, the beginning is the usual, you know, uh, importing and I'm importing the quantum circuit, but I think I don't need this operator. So let me, Keep it away and I'm import, uh, importing this numpy because we might need it. And uh, here you see, uh, I'm just uh, demonstrating how to implement a C3x using three Toffoli's. So let me run it. And uh, uh, you see, this is a control, control, control. So this Q3 is my uh, qubit that is set in. Uh, uh, that I will set in zero state later on. And this Q4 is my uh, qubit that I will set in the minus state. So this essentially implements C, 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 X kit, where this Q3 is uh, that auxiliary uh, qubit that will be set in the zero state. And you know, this, uh, if I use later on this uh, uh, as a Grover, you know, Oracle, so this will essentially mark one, one, one element as uh, the answer of the search problem. If you want to mark, uh, uh, let's say one, zero, one uh, element. So then what you will have to do, let's say one, zero, one, if that is what you want to implement, I will need uh, uh, this Q1 to first uh, uh, have uh, uh, an X gate. So QC dot X and bit number qubit two. And then at the end, I will again need an X gate on this bit. So if I use this, this marks 101 element because uh, this Q1 will now work only if this Q1 is set in zero. Because if it is zero, this X will turn it into one and then all the control operations would happen. And then at the end, this X will again turn the one back to zero. So that 101 will activate this gate and uh, it will remain 101 at the output. So this, you, you know, implements uh, the Grover Oracle for 101. And since you remember from the class that uh, sometime uh, we have uh, to repeat the Grover and the diffuser part again and again. So I'm now going to put this into a function. So for that, uh, you can do using this, this you know, uh, function definition. So I'm defining this phase oracle function, it has this n as uh, uh, input, so n is the number of qubits, and then optionally I can you know set this uh, input name to some uf, and now I initialize this quantum circuit, and if you want to you know use this this one, this one zero one as uh, the marking for this, let me replace this one 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 with this. So now this part is, you know, part of this function. Wherever I will call phase oracle, uh, this phase oracle uh, will essentially call this circuit. So since this is a function, I don't see any uh, output here uh, drawn. Similarly, this is uh, uh, a function that I have made to uh, represent the diffuser part. So if in the diffuser, uh, in the diffuser, if you remember, we had the Hadamard layer, then UF naught, and then the Hadamard layer again. So this UF naught has to mark 0, 0, 0 element. So this essentially, you know, implements uh, this 0, 0, 0 uh, control gate because uh, this Q naught, Q1, Q2 have this X gates. So this control gate would be initialized by 0, 0, 0. And then this zero zero will be turned into 
uh, the same 0, 0 as 1 by these x gates. So this circuit remains fixed throughout this, you know, Grover set because only zeroth element has to be marked. So let's run it. So this is the one. And then I put it as part of the diffuser circuit. So my diffuser function has this n as input and its name is v. And now I have a quantum circuit with n qubits. So n I will later on set to five. And uh, I have this layer of Hadamard. I just apply uh, Hadamard on the first three qubit. And then this is the same uh, circuit that is printed over here, which is essentially marking the zeroth element. And then there's this uh, second Hadamard layer. And then, you know, I return QC. So this function, whenever it is called, will implement this uh, uh, diffuser V. Okay, this is now my main program. You see, I have n is equal to five. So there are total five qubits. Three are uh, the working qubits because it's going to be a three qubit Grover uh, algorithm. And then there is the fourth qubit, which uh, I have to put in zero uh, for the sake of implementing, you know, uh, the Oracle. And then there is the fifth qubit, which is again the Ancilia qubit that I will have to put in the minus stage. Now, before I, you know, uh, run this uh, algorithm, I have to find this R. And R is the number of times I have to implement uh, the iteration of Grover, you know, operator. And this is, uh, if you remember, is was pi by four divided by also square root of capital N and capital N in this case is two power n minus two. So N is five, but there are only three working qubits. So it's two power three. And then this number of solution is that mu that we were talking about last time. So let me actually write this as mu. I think you will be able to relate it with the answer. And then uh, over here, I have this flooring function because if it is a non-integer function like 3.7, something like that, then uh, I will floor it to three and take its integer part uh, as my value of R. Okay, now once I have R, I first need to apply this Hadamard transform, the first step of the uh, Grover uh, circuit. And uh, one way of doing it is, you know, the loop, just as, you know, uh, we did here, or we did here, but this is just uh, another way. This is syntactic sugar in later uh, in, in Python that I can also implement the loop using this range function. So gr dot h like Hadamard gates on this Grover circuit. So by specifying range of three, so it applies, uh, you know, for, from zero to three minus one. Okay, so now here I am putting my last qubit in the minus state by first applying X gate and then the Hadamard gate. And then this is the main, you know, central part of uh, this uh, algorithm. Uh, for J in range R, I first append my circuit with, with the phase oracle and it, uh, it takes N qubits. And then I uh, give this range n because you know this gr is a circuit that has qubit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then when I give an append command and I ask another circuit you know, to be made part of this, I have to specify that uh, uh, what are the qubit you know, arrangement that has to be connected with that. So this range n tells uh, this append command that you append this phase oracle uh, that has uh, this n qubit uh, so that the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 qubit go to this, this uh, in, in this order of 0, 1, 2. You can actually uh, change the order here as well when you're appending. For example, you can connect fourth qubit with the first qubit of the circuit that you're appending and so on. But here I'm appending in the you know straightforward order. So that's why range n, range n. Similarly, I append my diffuser. And now once we have, uh, you know, implemented this uh, Grover for as many time as we want, let's actually print R here so that we know what is the value of R. All right. And then at the end, I just have these measurements. Okay. So I apply. So again, you see, I'm applying these measure gates using this range function. So 
zero one two quantum qubits are being measured and put on zero one two classical uh, measurements. And then there's this draw circuit, so let's run it. Okay, so we see R was computed to be two, so that's why this U F and V U F and V appear twice. Now you can see there's this first layer of Hadamard. Nothing is has been done to Q three. This is qubit remains in zero required for implementing oracles in U F and V. And then this Q4 is uh, put to this minus state. Okay, so any question about uh, implementing this circuit? No, uh, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, out of the five qubits, we always have to work with the three qubits. Is this the general rule or specific for this problem? Uh, what do you mean by general rule? Uh, I mean, here we have five qubits and we are working with three only. Right. So if we have n, so we will be working with n minus two always? No, 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 no. It, it depends. You see, uh, you decide number of qubits by first deciding uh, how many are the, you know, search items in your uh, search database. For example, uh, you have eight elements in your search database, like capital N is equal to eight. So it means you need three working qubits, right? Small n is equal to three. So for three working qubit, I have to implement the oracles. And to implement the oracle, I needed two auxiliary qubit because we just saw in the uh, presentation before that to build a three qubit oracle, I need uh, uh, two uh, auxiliary qubits. So one was set in zero and the other was in minus. So I need five qubits. Now, if you want to work with a search, uh, space that has 16 elements, it means you need n is equal to four. You need four working qubit. So if you have four working qubit, you will probably need uh, uh, three qubit in zero state and one qubit in minus state. So four, three, plus three, plus one, you will need eight qubits to uh, work in total. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another question. Mm -hmm. And can we use this algorithm for finding eigenvalues of the matrix? So we can we solve a polynomial equation with this one? This Grover algorithm? Uh, yes. Not directly, unless you can convert that problem into a search problem and implement on Oracle that you know gives a, a phase value when the solution of that problem is found. Oops. Okay, and you see, I have uh, selected a problem which has three working qubit for a reason, because this is restricting my total number of qubit to five. And you have seen uh, yesterday that most of the IBM quantum computers uh, at this at the lower end has five qubits and they are easily available. Uh, if you go to let's say six or seven qubit, you will need uh, a higher end quantum computer. And then most of the high end quantum computers are not even actually available freely. So most of the algorithm that we plan to run on a quantum computer, we try to keep the number of qubits towards the lower side. Because we are in the class, we're just learning, you know, to, to understand algorithm and to implement it. If you have to solve some practical problem, then we can uh, decide to go with higher number of qubits. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, so let me run this, uh, you know, circuit. I Before this problem, I had, you know, mark one one uh, as uh, my answer. So this these are older simulation results. But now we have marked mark one zero one uh, as the solution. So we should be, you know, getting one zero one with the high probability. So again, for running, you see from Kiskit, I import basic air, air execute, lost histogram, etc. And then I select my simulator as a cost simulator and then use this command execute. This GR is the Groover circuit. Then backend is now my simulator, cost simulator, and I'm using it for 1000 shots. So let's run it. Perfect. So you see 101 is coming with high probability, but still we are getting others as well. And this is not because of errors. You see other states with some probability as well. And this is simply because we saw last time that after rotating, our state may not exactly align with the solution state because we are rotating with integer number of steps and the state could be, you know, uh, within plus minus uh, alpha by two. So this means that uh, uh, there is always some error in measurement because the, the state vector at the end 
is mostly aligned with the solution state, uh, but uh, there is a small component perpendicular to that as well. So that's why we see uh, non-solution state uh, values as well in the answer. Okay, so let me run it on uh, the quantum computer now to see, and let's see which one is the least busy right now. Quantum computing IBM. So let's view them. So does this have the ones that we, okay, let's see if this Kyoto, this Kyoto is actually very low quantum volume. Let's see if this Bogota is available. Bogota is 335 jobs, too busy. Bellum has only three jobs. So let's try to run on Bellum because this has a volume 16. So IBM Q Bellum. Okay, I have submitted the job. And you can see my results from previous uh, simulations on Kyoto that I ran and they're almost all garbage. Uh, it couldn't tell me, okay, which one is the solution space. And one reason is this, that the circuit that we have implemented right now it's actually a very uh, complicated circuit. We have implemented uh, uh, several Toffoli gates, which uh, will ultimately have to broken down to several control X gates and control X gates are, are still very noisy. So just to give you an idea, each of the Toffoli gate usually uses three or four control X gates in addition to others. So this is actually a very you know big circuit that is just uh, looking like a very small circuit. Okay, so while we are waiting for results uh, from uh, Bellum, let me go back here and uh, just show you this interface a little bit more. So, showing that I still have zero pending job. Is it run already? Oh, yes, so we got the results back and we were supposed to have uh, 101 as our answer. But unfortunately, 101 still has, you know, high probability than the other one, but still the difference is not that high that uh, we could unequivocally say that, okay, 101 is the solution. But anyway, this is the problem uh, of running uh, programs on quantum computer that have, uh, you know, higher number of uh, uh, these gates uh, because this Toffoli is implemented using a lot of uh, control X and so on. And we are using a circuit that have uh, many of these. So if like one, two, three, four, so there are anywhere close to uh, 13, uh, 12 Toffolis. And if you go to CX, like about close to 30 control X gates are here which mean that this is a very big circuit, which is, you know, uh, in, inducing a lot of noise. We might, you know, get better result if we run it uh, uh, on uh, a better quantum computer with a bit higher volume. For example, uh, this Brooklyn or, uh, but I don't know if this Brooklyn is available in free category or not. Okay, so if I go to my account detail, I can see what computers are available to me. So I have Manila, uh, Bellum, Kyoto, Santiago, Armonk, Melbourne. So these are the computers that are available to me. So unfortunately, they're all the, you know, noisy 
quantum computers that are available here. So my actually application for educator uh, account is under review. And uh, if I uh, get that approved from IBM, we might you know, be able to have access to little better computers. Okay, so uh, any question uh, on this? By the way, sometime when we have a, a program running for 1000 shots and it's noisy if we you know, run it for longer, we might be able to get a better result. But since this result is already noisy, I don't expect you know much improvement with our 8000 shot. So if you're lucky and uh, we are able to multiply this you know, with eight, uh, itself eight times, this peak might get a little bit bigger than other one, but uh, uh, the likelihood of that is very low because uh, it's not you know uh, given that in each uh, run we will have you know similar statistics. Okay, so uh, I'm concluding this session.